Hello, welcome to the Crusader States Abridged 11. Last time we fought a big battle that allowed us to steal away the more capital in Iberia. But then while pressing the front lines, we ended up in a deadly bridge battle that we somehow won. But it went into another battle right after, so we're continuing this action on the front with another bridge battle against two enemy armies. Just like last time, we're being attacked across the bridge and from our own side, so we're being attacked from both directions. But we're reacting in the opposite fashion to what we did last time. We won't try and quickly win the bridge battle. We want to face down the enemy's reinforcements as fast as possible, because the force on the other side of the bridge is going to be much more difficult to get at. So I deployed far from the bridge, and indeed we start fighting the reinforcements right away. They've got a few of those Arab Cav on our left, and I was eager to not fight them with my generals, seeing or having seen before that they're actually quite powerful for a light Cav unit. But I couldn't escape, so I had to fight them in the end with some spearmen to support. Across the rest of the line, we're just doing our best with the scraps of troops we have left over from the very bloody victory we won previously down the hill at the bridge, perhaps last night in this context. We've got some good news here. The captain, probably amongst those Arab Cav, dies. And because armies commanded by captains already have low morale, the death of that captain means we don't have to do that much against this reinforcement army to get rid of them and indeed just attacking them in the back with archers in melee and stuff like that gradually allows us to rout enemy units. We've made a gap in their line and now my very few cav are going to go behind and start making attacks as well. And just generally speaking we are able to take out this reinforcement army even without much of an army ourselves and once they start routing because their units are still at really high strength we can spend a lot of time killing them to make the best of this no matter what happens for the rest of the battle and there will be some more fighting because once that's done we need to turn round and face the army that came across the bridge and has now come up the hill to fight us. That army was mostly siege weapons you might remember but they do have lots of regular units and in particular they've got a general at full strength in the middle there. I was very concerned about that guy but he doesn't charge us. I'm able to get him into melee while he was just walking along and he stops. So no disastrous charge that probably could have taken out our whole army if they really wanted to. And now I'm using crossbows to shoot into the melee. Doesn't matter if we kill our own side because we just need to kill those bodyguards somehow. They're going to kill our men either way. So it's definitely worth it. As for my own few bodyguards, I'm going to use them to try and win some of these melees that are broken out, breaking out sorry, all over the place. My ranged units are all on uh, skirmish mode, which means they're not very useful. We need to keep shooting at close range basically that's our only hope here there's nowhere to go in terms of skirmishing anyway so yes my generals are trying to take out some spear militia here on the left end of our line but you can see the effect of having a general in the enemy army these guys are not routing even as a militia unit down to really low numbers so we have to finish them off almost completely to actually end that combat and free up some of our own men deadly stuff but there's no other choice so we'll keep hacking our way through and we do start to see some progress in particular the shooting the crossbows into the melee plan works it's hard to tell here but the enemy general is almost dead he's only got a few men now and he's starting to quit that engagement he looks like he's going after my generals but i'm going to quickly bypass him to try and end one of these other fights we've got a bunch of ranged units fighting the enemy spearmen but having the cav attack them in the rear breaks them and we can clear up that little mess and suddenly we have numbers on our side we have a few groups of scrappy unit remnants and all we need to do is focus down that general who's almost dead so finally I'm committing my own generals to go and join that fight with their few bodyguards. All the ranged units will shoot at some nearby camels. And all in all, this does the business. We kill the enemy general, who was their latest faction leader by the looks of things. And the rest of the units are routing away. The battle is not won though, because we still have to contend, in theory, with all of the other units in their army that are still on the other side of the river. But this is all the siege units I mentioned. I'm guessing they can't cross the river or the AI doesn't want them to. Maybe the bridge is impassable to them. So they're just going to stand there. Now this means we are guaranteed to win from this point because with the defender, we can wait the timer out. And if the AI just doesn't do anything, we'll automatically win from here. However, I did want to try and actually get some kills on this artillery. And one thing I could try to do that is send this squad of three guys forward in loose formation to start getting shot by the artillery. As long as they're shooting us at maximum range, 
they're really inaccurate and they're just statistically unlikely to ever hit my little squad of three guys. So I tried this out and I did manage to expend all the ammo from some catapults but that used pretty much all the time left in the battle so you can see in the top right it's counting down to us winning. I tried another strategy to get more things to fire at me and that was to get underneath the bridge but you actually can't go underneath it so it didn't work and I started running away. Their trebuchets were firing at me now and they shoot a more impressive projectile, this kind of scattershot thing that looks like it would be nice and juicy firing at a formation of troops. Deadly stuff, but anyway we're not going to have any more of that, our three guys make it away in one piece and then we just stand around back where we deployed and eventually we are declared the winners because of the time limit. There we go then, a free heroic victory, we've got away with it again. But that's not necessarily the end of matters because you can see the Moors still have tons of stuff waiting just by this bridge. So now I'm wondering, will they simply attack us again and finally finish us off? The answer though is that they don't. They seem to fall back, perhaps intimidated by these outrageous bridge defences, and we've gotten away with it. We get a fun distraction at the start of the next turn. Looks like the Pope has died and now... The fact that I've gradually been accumulating cardinals recently, which I think I mentioned previously, has all added up and we actually have enough cardinals to just force our own guy to be elected. So there we go. This doesn't really do anything, but basically the Pope is now of the Crusader States. I think we already had max relations with the old Pope, so no idea if this actually achieves anything, but in theory, this is a good thing. Plus, this Pope is much younger than the last one, so he'll stay on the papal throne for a longer time. We can enjoy a few decades of domination over the uh, dominant religion on the map. So, with that sorted, we need to go back and resolve this bridge thing. We've got basically nothing left there. I said we got away with that, but... Really, we got away, but with all of our troops dead. All we achieved in those battles was holding the bridge, which is useful because it means we can reoccupy the bridge with reinforcements and still have that nice defensive position. You can see I've brought the king over, so we're going to get a serious force to sit here on the bridge. Some of the troops from the original army have rejoined the king's force there, including the officers. And with that sorted, things are looking a bit better there. We can bring over extra reinforcements to really tip the balance in our favour. Now, those remaining more troops probably won't be able to force the bridge. What I wanted to do here actually was set up a fort on our side to permanently lock this place down. But I ended up just taking our two armies and combining them into one good army with all of the best troops. And then the trash troops can follow behind. So we've got possibly our most elite army ever sitting on that bridge now. So there's little chance for the enemy to get through. They do move an army over, as if they were going to try, but they don't follow up on that. So nothing happens there in the end, and we still hold the bridge. I also brought the troops back from Fez in Africa to defend this other road into our territory. We did have a bit of an open border in the west, and the Moors were looking like they were about to actually come through. Luckily our extra troops arrived, and we've secured this front as well. I even realised we might as well just push forwards and attack this small army, and Aragon thinks that's a good idea, so good for them. This army looks like it's been in the wars already, it's half dead, so nothing much to worry about. I was about to go kill them, but then I got distracted. I remembered that our reinforcements are almost here, and here they are. Ages ago, if you recall, perhaps many episodes ago, I set off from Jerusalem with a bunch of elite troops and now they're finally here so we've got tons of heavy infantry and some knights and stuff which we can filter into our armies and generally we're about to become a lot more powerful. With that in mind I thought maybe I should not bother attacking and just wait for the reinforcements to catch up but then I went on to or to resolve that fight because there's no point leaving them alive especially because with them dead we can stand on that bridge and have a nice position for this turn. I'm also this time going to do the fortification thing I tried on the other bridge so that it's really hard for the enemy to now get into our territory, our defences are secure at least. I'm actually going to switch focus more onto this western bridge, you can see I moved the reinforcements from the north bridge over to the west bridge right there. Because with the arrival of our troops from the Holy Land, we now have so much stuff that can push west, we might as well do that since the Moors aren't there, so we'll attack mostly where the Moors aren't defending, and where their troops are concentrated, they're unlikely to be able to force that bridge and get past our king. And indeed, they don't even try, so now we're in business, we can move troops to besiege this next town. There's not all that much in it, so we could probably take it with uh, one army, especially if we manually resolved it. 
but we don't have to do such dirty peasant things as manual resolves when we can spam these armies down. By the time we have our siege equipment ready, we're going to have like two and three quarter stacks there to force that town to be on our side. Now we could just end the turn there and wait to resolve that business next turn. But I realized we could actually do a siege draw out up at Seville if I just go on the offensive in the north. We don't have any particular advantage because the enemy still have their troops grouped together, but I thought let's just go for it. Since this armor we have here is quite good and I want to try it out in battle, we might as well take this opportunity. And we do even have a small advantage on the balance bar there. The army from inside the castle is only small, so nothing too much to deal with. I was checking the stats there and noting their horse archers are actually a bit better than their melee calf, the sort of thing you need to keep in mind once you're down on the battlefield. Anyway, for the most part, looks like it's going to be a load of spear militia to get through, so that shouldn't be too much trouble for our now somewhat decent army. This is a surprisingly rare kind of battle, really, a straight up traditional field battle. Two armies just walking at each other and we'll see what happens. We, although being the attacker, have the luxury of defending for some reason. The enemy's initial army rushed us before the reinforcements came onto the field. That's fine by us, you can see I've already put some cav off on their own wing to just sit behind the enemy army ready to go. Meanwhile, my front line will charge now that the enemy are close, just because the enemy had ranged units and I couldn't be bothered to micromanage any kind of ranged skirmish. Let's get this going, especially keeping in mind that our advantage is mostly in heavy cav. We want the enemy to just get distracted and then we'll start working those flanks with the heavy cav. Their army doesn't have a general, so they're going to be on low morale and there are plenty of spear militia in that front line as well, so they're not going to be doing very well. They did have some success on our right where some camels are just kind of wandering around and are somehow mauling my heavy macemen. But on the left, we are doing the business where our heavy cab are just rear attacking and slaughtering everything and off they route. I was meant to be attacking all across the enemy's back line with my cav, but they're distracted in the background. Some camels actually went all the way back to stop them. So it took them a while to arrive for the rear attack. And when they finally came down to start attacking, the enemy's first army is pretty much routed. Most of them didn't fight very long. So they end up routing into our rear attack and getting absolutely annihilated that army is gone. The thing is, this doesn't help us because we're not here to kill that army, we're here to kill the other one. So while I did spend some time chasing these guys down to make sure we got lots of kills, really I needed to focus on reforming somewhat close to the center of the map so that the enemy's reinforcements will get drawn nice and far away from the edge, and then we'll kill them to achieve true victory. The problem was some of the enemy units were walking towards the edge of the map without routing, and it was then I realized, wait a minute, they're not entirely routing, they're just withdrawing, and that includes the enemy's reinforcements. They've just come onto the map and they're turning around to leave. In fact, that general over there has already left. So that's trouble for us. This stops us from completing our objective. That one unit of Javs, I think it was, was still on the map. So I sent some cav to chase them down. And I got there in time that they kind of re aggroed Just before they left the map, they turned around to engage this cavalry unit. So I thought, fine, we'll charge these Javs down with the Crusader Knights. That should be a nice, good trade for us. But it was actually a lot worse than I thought, because while we got a nice big hit and routed them quickly, they did throw a volley of Javs during the melee, and it killed about 20 of our 50 Knights. So that was devastating, really, considering how that fight should have gone. Anyway, they started running away, but there's not that much point chasing them down, because we definitely haven't got enough of that second army to successfully do the siege draw out. So I just ended the battle. It would have been a good idea to kill them, but I just couldn't be bothered, I guess. That's the end of that. So yes, looks like about two thirds of the reinforcement army is still alive, mostly because they just left the field. That means this battle, well, a big victory, and it takes down one of the enemy's tanks, doesn't achieve what I was looking for. I guess it's still a win. It's just not a really big win, which is what I wanted. So now we might as well go and besiege the castle. There's gonna be a few guys left inside, but we can't go anywhere else. We'll set the siege up and see if that other army nearby triggers a battle, because that army's probably not very good, and then we'll have potentially a second chance to do the siege draw out. Actually though, well as you saw, they just ran off into the Leonese territory, so not much is happening there. And that leaves us with two particularly easy sieges ongoing right now, so it is time for some water resolves. We stack everything up down in the southwest and annihilate the enemy force there. That's one more place captured. And this time I'm going to start following the sacking advice because these guys are just so far from the capital that they're not going to have any of my nonsense. Therefore we have to kill at least some of them to prove we mean business. 
And there we go, move closer to the Holy Land if you want to survive. We can leave one stack there, or half stack really, to uh, try and keep the town under control and move most of the troops from nearby to rush all the way up to this bridge in the north, and that immediately secures our defences. We can lock the enemy out of our part of the map now. It's only Lisbon left for the Moor, so we've nearly defeated them. And yes, now we have them under control. They're going to have to work very hard to break out of their little pocket. And over with that other auto resolve. Well, not much happens. We break our way in. Once again, we kill everyone, and the place is under control. Sicily approves of this killing by the looks of things. So, yes, just one more enemy territory to take. Now, when it comes to the next more turn, they don't have that much to show for themselves. I think they're distracted fighting Leon, basically. So, they're not focusing on me, and that's going to help out quite a lot. We've got another reinforcement army on the way in. I had two armies that I sent from the Holy Land to help out in this campaign in Iberia. And that second army is now arriving and I'm going to dump them right here next to Lisbon. We've got loads of good units right there. So I'm going to grab a general from somewhere or other and throw him into that army. So suddenly we have a pretty competent force right there on the front line and we can get that siege going right away. The city is heavily garrisoned. But we also have more stacks in movement range this turn, so we can start forming something up here. Going to bring the guys down from the bridge, basically, since defending that bridge is no longer going to be important. We're approaching the end of our mission here, so we don't need to worry about holding down the other settlements. The enemy just aren't going to take them. I'm being very careful here to make sure I have a general in each army, both for the morale boost, but mainly, actually, for putting my mind at ease so that the army won't rebel because <laughs> once there's a general in there it's much less likely to happen and that's what I've been really punished by in the past rather than units just routing in fights. Anyway, there was that small enemy army that was on our side of the bridge but I teamed up with the king and a bunch of other guys to just go and auto resolve him to death and that's the end of that. There is still though another more army to the north. We can stop them from doing anything against us by actually occupying that bridge again with this force that just got the wind. So now they can't get past us. But that doesn't mean they can't go to the siege and rear attack our guys. And it looks like at first that's what they were planning. They do bring them down, but I think they run out of movement points right in front of us and they stop. So that's handy. Then the uh, battle ends up getting started anyway because Leon brings down a stack to attack that enemy army. And one of my three armies near the city is apparently in reinforcement range for this. I am offered the chance to go and help, so I say sure. And we end up with this battle. So this is a nice chance to bring down that enemy stack, although it does rely on what the Leonese forces will do. Especially because we're going to start the battle off the map, so for a while it's just going to be them fighting the enemy and we can't help. The Moors have another one of those trebuchets, so we can see the scattershot fire thing in action, as well as a bunch of other fiery projectile action. Yes, the army from Leon is lots of skirmishes by the looks of it. So they're just charging forwards and getting slammed. The Moors have skirmishes of their own, and it's hard to tell what's going on here, but hopefully our guys are doing well. All we can do is cheer them on and wait. Our guys are somewhere off in the corner of the map. I do need to pop an order on them to make sure they're actually walking towards the fight while we just sit back and watch our allies getting trashed. And it is going to be our allies getting trashed for the most part. Looks like the enemy got a nice charge on them. That's going to drive those skirmish cab off the flank. And while some good melee troops have made it forward in the center, there's only a couple of units of them and it's not enough to overcome the enemy's sheer numbers. <laughs> Meanwhile, all the skirmishers are just kind of glitching out at the back, getting gradually killed by the siege weapons, which is fun to look at, but it's probably not contributing that much to the battle, as far as I can tell anyway, and of course, I can't really tell. Looks like they had a ballista of their own, but one of them's just been taken out. That's some bad luck. The enemy did react to me coming towards them, they sent three units to face me, some elite horse archers, some jav cav, and a general. So it's time for me to take part in the fight and contribute, especially with that general. If we can take him down, we'll be helping out quite a lot. Looks like we've got some of their skirmish cav into melee, so we'll fight it out using our own limited heavy cav right there. I'm sending more heavy cav to intercept the enemy's general though, because that's going to be the main threat. And I'm going to essentially sacrifice some Frankish Knights to deal with that. The Frankish Knights get absolutely annihilated by the enemy general, but at the same time, I've got some Jav Cav throwing jabs at that enemy general and bodyguard. That's going to do huge damage, especially at close range. So while I just spend a few seconds microing elsewhere to get everyone else doing stuff, that general goes all the way down and now he's basically dead. 
And by the way, you might note this army I'm using is real trash in its composition. It doesn't have enough units to properly fight a battle because it was just supposed to be some reinforcement trash to tip order resolves. Therefore, we don't really have melee troops or any sort of battle line we can set up, but we can just spam loads of archers and jabs and see what happens. And since there's already a battle going on, maybe melee troops won't be that necessary. That general actually survives, but his bodyguards are gone, so everything else charges on, and we engage the enemy's siege weapons from behind, finally ending the scourge on the rest of the Leonese troops. But the enemy do turn around to face us, they send troops back to fight here, and that's a problem because the men we're attacking with are now tired and they were never very good to begin with. Plus, the enemy general, who's still alive, is gradually hacking his way through our Bedouin infantry, our one melee unit, so they're not having a very good time. The Leonese are basically defeated, they didn't lose that many men but everything's routing all over the place and they're barely participating, so it looks like it's going to be up to me to finish this off. Because the enemy general's still alive, we're not getting the routes I thought we'd get. This was less just mopping up the survivors and more fighting another not all that uneven battle with my trashy, weirdly composed army. And very weirdly formed up as well, this tube of javelinies is apparently being killed by a few ballista crew who somehow haven't routed. But yes, the fight goes on and we do have sheer numbers and strength on our side here. And the final nail in the coffin is that the enemy general does eventually die fighting with some jabs and those Bedouins over there at the back. With that, the last few units rout away, joining the Leonese in their route. And we can chase them down to get the magic number, etc. and generally finish them off. That means there is going to be no relief for the siege of Lisbon, that enemy army is toast. And as mentioned, the Leonese army is somewhat alive, since while they got completely driven off the field, not that many of them died. Perhaps because I was there to save them and provide a distraction, no doubt. Anyway, with all that done, news comes of a new crusade, interestingly enough. There's a new crusade to go up to Lithuania. The Lithuanians are pagan, which the Pope is surely not happy about, especially being so close to core Christian lands, having this non-Christian holdout must be very annoying for a Crusader States Pope, so a crusade has just been called to go take them down, but we've got a tiny bit of business to finish up before we look any more into that, because we need to kill the rest of the Moors. And with all of my stuff together here, it's really just not a result. Couldn't be bothered to attack all those spear levies or spear militia inside the city. The Moorish Caliph dies. Now I get the choice for what to do. I'm going to pick Sack. I very nearly picked Occupy by the looks of things. I was definitely considering it there, but then went with Sack. The Moorish Caliph is dead again. <laughs> Got another one. And then victory with an extremely loud cutscene. Looks like we completed the game. It just so happens that taking the last Moorish territory got us to 25 regions, which is the amount of regions that we needed to finish the game. So that was the Crusader States campaign on the short victory conditions. We could just end the series right there, but you can see immediately I'm interested in doing something else. The forces that just won that battle are being forced into the Crusade now because I wanted to end this in a slightly more climactic and perhaps more neat fashion by making sure this crusade was won and that the Crusader states were the ones to be uh, making sure this all goes well, to keep our reputation of course. That means there will be a bonus post-game episode of this series, as for some reason there is now traditionally in my abridged campaigns. So yes, we're going off to Crusade, for some reason one navy here can go way further than the other one, so we're not going to arrive with the two stacks I hoped, we'll just do it with one. I haven't done it yet, so we'll see how it goes, and there'll probably be at least one more episode's worth of stuff to talk about. Plus, there's going to be some eyebrow-raising developments back in the Holy Land as well to cast an eye over. I'll see you for the next part. Thank you.